There is a monster coming to War Thunder. A heartless, ruthless demon with just a single purpose in life. To destroy all aircraft as efficiently and as brutally as possible. And there is no getting away. Get acquainted with the infrared homing air-to-air -air missile. Not a monster, not a demon, and certainly not the ultimate weapon. This is a fairly simple weapon system with its own set of strengths and flaws. Missiles of this type finally make their appearance in our game. For example, the F-100D Super Sabre, the latest addition to the American tech tree, carries Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles in addition to unguided munitions, air-to-surface missiles and bombs. Brits now have their own Rank 6 Javelin Mark IX, a twin-engine two-seater fighter type armed with the British Firestreak air-to-air -air missile. And Soviet pilots will be happy to see the MiG-19 PT Interceptor, a version of the world's first ever production supersonic jet, designed specifically for use of air-to-air -air missiles. In order for you to understand exactly what this weapon is that you're going to use and encounter in your fights, let's see how it actually works. This technology took a long time to mature, the earliest homing missiles were mostly directed to its target with a special guidance beam. Those were big, heavy monstrosities that didn't pack enough punch and had a rather short operational range. Then it was time for a Eureka moment. You don't actually need to illuminate a target. Every object in the known universe is constantly emanating or reflecting something. You just have to know what. An aircraft, for example, is radiating a lot of things, but most notably, heat. A lot of it. A turbo engine is creating so much heat that its infrared light emission can be seen and tracked many kilometers away, even under the cover of clouds, fog or rain. There's no need for any bulky onboard radar system to boot. You just have to outfit the nose of a missile with a special lens, sturdy enough to accept harsh overload conditions of supersonic flight, and transparent to IR light emissions. Underneath it, basically a mirror that spins really, really fast, reflecting the IR waves that it caught onto an array of sensors. This tells the missile the angle to which the missile should start steering with a bit of a lead, of course, as targets tend to become crazy agile when there is a Seeker missile on their tail. Even with the bulky mid-century type electronics, a guidance system of this sort turned out to be so tiny that it revolutionized the industry. See for yourself, both the American AAMN-7, which later became the famous AIM-9 Sidewinder, and the British Firestreak are very, very light, even elegant. With a seeker of this size and weight, you could get yourself a bigger warhead or install a more powerful engine to get more range and make the missile faster in flight. Opportunities were endless. There was, of course, an inevitable reality check. Infrared homing isn't ideal. First, if a missile was detecting several sources of IR light emissions, it couldn't decide which one to track and lost its course. This allowed engineers all over the world to create effective countermeasures by employing special pyrotechnics as IR decoys. Moreover, a very big and persistent source of IR waves is uh, the sun. Following the target into the sun also resulted in the loss of the target. The spinning mirror of the missile's eye simply bombarded the sensors with unnecessary information. When people learned about this, they came up with yet another brilliant idea. To outfit an aircraft with its own IR sun. A system for generating pulsing IR waves capable of blinding enemy missiles. Regardless of all these shortcomings, infrared seekers saw a lot of success throughout the years and became the staple for guiding air-to-air -air missiles. Rightfully so. First, the US and the UK, then the Soviet Union. 
all employed them in their respective armies. Even now, as we move further into the 21st century, infrared homing is still the go-to technology when it comes to short-range missiles. Now that you understand how these missiles work, it will be easier for you to use them and to dodge them. More about that in our next video. See you in battle!